Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to our staples list. This is another part of a video series I plan to make and I already have started, uh, on which I will show you how you can like get the most out of the game, like save money, save gems, but get the best cards, get competitive decks. And I already made a video for this series, which I presented some budget decks. You can find it in the info card here on the right side of the screen or just search in my channel. And today we want to look at some staples. I want to show you uh, the, in my opinion, best staples that you can craft. Staples means these are cards that you can use in a lot of decks not for example like let me show you an example let's say we play branded despia and let's say we want to craft ah this card like masquerade the blazing dragon so this is an ultra rare and of course it's very good in a uh, branded despia but it's not a staple card in a sense that you cannot use it in nearly every other deck so a sprite deck doesn't use it a labyrinth deck doesn't use it but there are some cards which many decks use and that also depends on the meta of course there will be some matters where some hand traps or board breakers which we already talked about will be better than others and there were some matters where you can not use them but then there will come another matter where you can then put them back into your deck and that's what makes them a staple card so we will look at monster staples uh, field staples uh, spell staples trap staples and the extra deck staples and i already or i chose only to include super rares and ultra rares because of course rares and normals you have so many points as you can see here uh, on my screen that you basically can craft everything that you want so that is not that important so i will discuss each card i show you a bit i will explain to you why it's a good card and i will also like rank them a bit because there are staples on this list that are way more important than other ones and I will tell you which ones are niche and which ones are like basically safe to craft but as I said it also depends so let's start right in Diddy Crow Diddy Crow I already talked about it in the hand trap tier list this is good in a format where there is much play with the grave like we will have in the next format with tier element so Diddy Crow will be a good card then because it can remove something from the grave this is also super rare and I think that there are a lot of formats and returning formats where you can side in a Diddy Crow in your main deck and normally you would not play three Diddy Crows that's pretty rare so making one or two that's a pretty safe bet so if you find a list on maybe Master Duel and there are Diddy Crows in the list um, then it will not be bad crafting them you will have to use them or you can use them at some point and as I said especially in the upcoming format you can use the DD Crow you could use it in this format as well you could like get some of the runic quick spells from sprite runic out of the graveyard you could activate this uh, when a sprite elf activates and get the monster that the sprite elf wants to revive out of the graveyard there are many options but i would also say this is not like a staple staple card um like we will see uh, with some other cards um but it's a good card that we'll see play here and there and especially in the upcoming format so the next card is the effect veiler this is an ultra rare so you have to consider well if you want to craft this with super rares you always will find some super rare points but of course you still want to like manage your super rare resource and and not just spend them on stuff that you cannot use in the future so effect veiler i think effect veiler is also a very good and consistent hand trap this is more on the consistent side um effect veiler has the same same effect or a similar effect like maybe a psi frame gear gamma it's like a negate it's the same basically like an infinite impermanence um and decks that are able to play many hand traps often include an effect veiler or more effect veilers like math mech or like the pure sprite deck and i think crafting effect veiler and you can even craft three um it's pretty solid and there will always be times where you can use the effect veiler in your deck and you will not feel sorry um, but there are better options and we will come to them in a moment so draw and lock bird for those of you who do not know you play this and then uh, your opponent oh no both players cannot add uh, cards from their deck to their hand uh, for the rest of the turn except by drawing them with the door face so this is also a really good card in specific formats um, i would say against sprite it's quite a good card against tier laments it's not that good because you don't draw a lot of cards but you put them to the graveyard and then fuse fusion fusion summon with them sorry so in the upcoming format i think it's okay but this is also super rare and having like two or one two and maybe even three draw and lock bird that's not pretty bad uh, normally this is a side deck card in the tcg uh, but i think think if there are some decks running one or two drawing lockbirds it's absolutely fine you can in the like beginning of the game if you don't have like three ash blossoms you can think about uh, like replacing them with a draw and lockbird but of course they are doing very different things and um yeah i think uh psi frame gigama is closer to an ash but that is a possibility the next card we are talking about this is um, this is one of the first cards you need to craft maybe it is even the first card you need to craft so this this or ash blossom so these are the two cards uh which i would craft three of in the beginning uh you can get one ash blossom for free maxi 
Um, unfortunately, you can't at this point in the game. Craft three of these, you will need this in nearly every deck. And if they ever like forbid this card, then you can just decraft it and get your points back. So I guess that's fine. So this is like number one, craft this when you start the game. Uh, but I will make a video about the gem resource and how you can save gems and how to like wisely spend them in the future. So Psyframe Gear Gamma, awesome. It's a super rare and the part it needs to work is also a normal card. So that's not pretty expensive. You can only use two because it's a really good card. Uh, it's a really good, uh, uh, like effect negation card and um, I think in every format there are some decks who have the like the option the place to run this card and it's a pretty solid option um, the good thing about this in like comparison to other hand traps is that it destroys the card it negates the card and destroys the card the like disadvantage is that you don't uh, you your um, board has to be empty for you to be able to summon the Psy Prime Gear Gamma so as this is a super rare and this comes up in uh, a lot of metas, uh, there will always be decks playing this. I think two of them and the uh, normal card which belongs with them, the Psy Frame Driver, this is a pretty safe option. So the next card is Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit and I talked about this in the hand trap video. I think this is pretty good against Sprite at the moment because it can destroy the gigantic Sprite. Uh, notably this only destroys, not negates. So if we are looking at the Ghost Girls here, uh, like these three and uh, the other Ghost Girls I did not even include because I don't think these are staples. I think if you have three Ash Blossom which you obviously should craft first and before these then you can consider crafting one or two ghost ogre this is pretty meta specific so this is definitely not one of the first ultra rares i would go for but i will come to that in a second when we come to the other ultra rares. so this is priority and of course ash blossom what do you need to say this is also priority these two cards are going to get crafted first optimally because this is also counter to this as long as this is in the game this will be at three in the game in most decks these are the first two cards you should definitely craft then we have ghost bell and Haunted Mansion, um, which uh, works with the Grave, interacts with Grave effects. This will become better in the upcoming tier element format, but um, likely the same thing as with Ghost Ogre. I think there are better ultra rares that you should craft. Um, if you have them or if you have like really anything else, uh, then I think you can craft them, but having Ash Blossom is more important. And there are quite a few other ultra rares here that you should craft before you come to the Ghost Girls. But uh, or, like, I would, ex I would like, um, suggest to you that you would craft an effect veiler before you craft these because i think effect veiler is way more playable than the ghost girls are so the next one is skullmeister which when a card uh, effect is activated in your opponent's graveyard you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard and negate the effect so obviously this is again for a format in which the graveyard is used pretty much by a lot of decks like the next format um, i think having maybe one or two in the next format of these and having a deck which can slot them in this can work but i also think that this is not a card that you need to have though it is a super rare and it's not that expensive but i think there are better super rares that you can or you should focus on so this card i have this crafted myself but i pulled it out of a pack this is fairy tale snow which is i think forbidden in tcg and ocg um, because it's pretty insane you can summon this as many times as you want in a round and uh, the effect of this card is not hard once per turn so you can flip down an opponent's monster as often as you can pay the cost which is banishing three cards from hand field or graveyard then you can special summon this uh, it's a cool card but and it is a staple card because um, it's put into some decks but this is more of a niche card so it's played in branded despia and i did not like if i wouldn't have put this i would not have crafted these i would like have crafted an harpy's feather duster before i would craft these or a nibiru which you can see i don't have at the moment so i just put this this is way down on the priority list in my opinion artifact lancia it's an interesting card which uh, is not that important in our current format and will not be important in our next format but will be important when kashtira comes around so in the tcg this is also played in the side deck you um, don't main this uh, especially often um, but I think in the Kashtira format, which will come in like half a year or something, this can be a good card. And then having like one or two of these is pretty fine. Other than that, I think it's more of a niche super rare. But, and I say it again, all of these are staple cards. So it makes more sense to craft an artifact Lancia before you craft like, I don't know. Uh, let me let me search something. So you better craft the artifact than crafting, I don't know, a deal with Dark Ruler or some super specific card, VLAN Hydra, that you can maybe play in one deck. So this will often uh, this will come up more often than VLAN Hydra does. So that's the way you have to think about these. If you have all the staple cards, then you are good to go because you will always have like maybe 10 or even more than 10 cards for every deck already in your collection because they are staples. 
So let's come to the next card. This is Dimension Shifter. I already talked about this in my budget deck tier list. It's a super strong card in the upcoming format. Uh, I guess they uh, put it to because of that. It's super good against tier elements because uh, for this turn and the next turn, the effect is that everything that goes to the graveyard is banished instead. This is super overkill against tier elements. This is also good against sprite, especially runic sprite. Um, I would not say craft this over an Ash or craft this over a Maxi or Nibiru because these are really like staples in every deck and nearly every format. But especially for the next format, I think having two Dimension Shifters, that is not a bad option that is not a bad um, like ultra rare to have but if you don't have like the core staples that i will show you and explain you i think this is more like a second priority where like a fairy tale snow would be a third priority and something like ash or nibiru and uh, maxi would be a first priority so container as a panko drops uh, this is a cool card which you can summon uh, let me see if your opponent controls more months in there you can summon this and then you can like tribute a dino <laughs> which is often this card and then destroy one card on your opponent's field it's super flexible but this is also more of a niche ultra rare staple like fairy tale snow so pretty much down on the priority list so lava golden pretty strong card especially for the side deck unfortunately we have a best of one format this makes this way weaker uh, there are not that many decks that can like easily slot in three lava golems um, but for a board breaker card and especially one of these monster board breaker cards yeah we're looking at the winged dragon of ra sphere mode who is also a board breaker monster card so for the budget option, you can better craft the Lava Golem than craft the Wing Dragon of Ra. But maybe we will get a best of three format, then this becomes more important and this becomes more important. You can and maybe have seen that some Runic Sprite variants run this Lava Golem in the main deck, um, but it also already starts to change. So yeah, having one, two or maybe three Lava Golems isn't bad, but this is not a priority super rare staple. Uh, same thing goes for the Wing Dragon of Ra Spear Mode. So this tributes two monsters from your opponent. This tributes three monsters from your opponent. So it's it's there to break a board. Um, but as I already said, you don't main deck board breakers like this. Normally you don't. So this also not an ultra rare I would like prioritize more of a tier three staple ultra rare. This is more of a tier one ultra rare uh, Nibiru the Primal Being. Uh, in the current format, it's not very good. And uh, like I never used it in a deck and I always went to Diamond Run, so this works. But I think this is one of the better cards. Um, I think you can work with one at the start. There are sometimes decks that play like two or three, but I think having one Nibiru, that's pretty good. There are like a lot of formats in which this card is a good main deck staple, like not in this format, unfortunately, but this is more of a tier one staple ultra rare that if you like have the Ash and the Maxi and maybe stuff like the Impermanence, Mm, called by the grave, crossout designator, then you can uh, go for the Nibiru and feel good about it. So Dark Hole, this is a pretty good uh, like board clear super rare. So if you don't have one in the form of maybe Lightning Storm or Dark Ruler no more, yeah, you can consider going for the Dark Hole as a good super rare staple. It's super rare, it's cheap, it's like a tier two super rare, it's good to have. So Happy's Feather Duster, this is an awesome ultra rare, especially for formats where they are pretty much um, only um, back row heavy decks like Labyrinth or like the old runic variant like Eldlich, then this is a really good card. So I don't have it, uh, I didn't need it until now, but this is, I would say, like a tier two ultra rare staple that you should craft when there is a really back row heavy format, which the next one possibly will not be one. So this got newly added to one. I think this is a good card. I will craft this in the future. This is a good board breaker. This is a good interactive card in and of itself, and it's a tier two ultra rare staple. So this is more of a, I think between tier one and tier two ultra rare staple. Uh, this is used in uh, some decks to enable plays uh, by using the graveyard in Benedespia for example you send the um, Despian tragedy to get your um, your Ah, the guy that searches your branded fusion, Aluber. Yeah, so um, this can enable some plays. I think I draw this from a pack, so I didn't have to make it. And I think if I would not have to make it, I would only have made it for the Bernard Despia deck. This is more of a tier two ultra rare staple, which is pretty good in some decks, but other decks, they cannot use it at all. Whereas every deck can use Ash Blossom. So this is terraforming. I think this is a pretty core ultra rare staple. I would like maybe call this tier 1.5. It's between tier 1 and tier 2 because every deck, nearly every deck that plays a field spell will play this card to, to search the field spell. This is basically a fourth field spell. Um, it's a bit worse because you can ash this, but that is its purpose. And in the upcoming formats that will come now to Master Duel, and we know this from TCG and OCG, there are many decks who run spiel fells, uh, felt spells. Uh, uh, um, spell field cards. Sorry, the English is uh, pretty hard to get it done. Uh, I'm not a bit English speaker, but I have to get used to speaking so much in English and then with these complicated names, as I am a German by birth. All right. So in the upcoming formats, there will be a lot of field spells. So Kashtira is an example, or even Tielemans, or um, yeah, Scareclaw, Visa, Starfrost. 
Um, so there are a lot of decks that use a field spell. Having this is pretty awesome. If you want to play tier elements in the next format, I think you will automatically craft this and then you will have it. So Gold Sarcophagus, this is more of a tier two of three niche ultra rare. Um, this is pretty good in Flu on the Rees to get your uh, first bird, the Robina, but this is more niche. So this is tier three and you don't need it like immediately when you start the game. So now we come to some of the pots. Port of Everest, um, yeah, this is a niche pot, more of a tier three. Super rares, there are better pots that you need to craft. Uh, I don't see this very often. This was better in the early Yu-Gi-Oh days. And I think, yeah, if a deck has this in it, yeah, sure, go craft it. You can maybe use it in some other decks, but this is more like a niche super rare. Don't like prioritize this. This is a better one part of reality uh, as you can dodge the first three cards of your deck and then choose one. Uh, this is really strong because you can look at what option you need and then pick it. Um, I think if a deck has these in it, just go for it, craft them and you will be very happy. This is a tier two super rare staple, good to have. Pot of Desires, this is also in many decks, also a tier two uh, super rare staple. If a deck has it, craft it, you banish uh, 10 cards and then you can draw two cards. There are many decks that can make use of this. so. Crafting Pot of Desires, that's not a bad call. The next super rare, or ultra rare step, sorry, is uh, very specific. It's like that grass looks greener and it enables every deck that uses 60 cards by milling um, as many cards as you, to have the, the same number of cards as your opponent has in his deck. So like every list that runs 60 cards will run two that grass looks greener. So if you ever plan on playing a 60 list, you will need them. And then you can basically trust that you will need them in every further 60 card list. So if you like these bigger decks, these bigger strategies, then having two of these is mandatory. Other than that, it's more of a tier three niche ultra rare. So the next pot is like the pot, which, which is so expensive in, oh no, this is this one, sorry, it's prosperity. This pot comes up not that often, um, the same as Pot of Errors. I would say this is more of a tier two pot and not like, oh yeah, craft this, you can better go for one of these or this Pot of Prosperity, which is super expensive in the TCG. Like one of these uh, is going for around 40 euros, which is cheap because uh, once they were like 100 euros or above. So not uh, that important, this pot, you can better go for this, this or this. But of course, it depends on the deck. There are some decks that can make better use of this pot and crafting this, you won't be sorry, it's okay. You will need it in some other decks in the future. So this is not a loss. Uh, Dark Row No More, oh, I talked about this in the board bracket here list. I think that's an awesome card. It's not played that often in Master Duel. I think many people do not understand how strong it is. Um, you don't want to craft three. Most of the time you don't play three. Having one or two Dark Row No More is really awesome. Uh, and I think you could slot this in uh, way more decks than that this is in right now. This is one of the best board breakers. You negate every uh, enemy um, like effect monster and they cannot react to this. Of course, in a format where there is a lot of back row like Labyrinth or Eldlich, you don't need this card because there are not much monsters that you need to negate. But in every other format, I think having one or two of these, that's a good call. And this is on my list, um, like high on my list for the next ultra rare stables that I want to craft because I see the value in this card. So Lightning Storm, you basically get for free. You get the one for free um, of, the, of the 700 gems back. I always say for free, of course, it's not for free, but basically for free. Uh, I would say uh, you are good to go with one. You don't need more than one. You can put two in, like there will not be many times where you will put three of these in. Uh, this is more of a slot card if you see a lot of back rows or if uh, there are a lot of boards made with attack position monsters, then you would slot this in. But I think having more than the one you can get for free, sorry guys, uh, I think you don't need more than one. But of course, there will be formats where this will especially be good. So the next one, this was the highest card on my craft list. And in this format and the next format, I already talked about it. An awesome card, super awesome. Get, these, uh, get this card. I uh, crafted two of these. I think you will not be sorry crafting three of these. This is such such a good card, hence why I chose it to be my name card, but obviously because it's Triple Tactics Sands, Triple Tactics Tim that fits, uh, that was also a reason. Um, this is a clear tier one ultra rare craft. Of course, there will be formats in which this is not that good. So like my, my original, like my original thing I said, it's still correct. Craft Ash Blossom, Craft Maxi, and other cards I will show you in a moment before you craft this. But then on the next level, you have things like Dark Ruler No More, Triple Tactics Talents, Nibiru the Primal Being, and maybe Foolish Burial Terraforming. But yeah, this card is super awesome. Craft these, and you even can craft three. And I don't feel, think you will be sorry for that in a format where you can use it. So this is like the best spot you can uh, craft. You can manage three or six cards from your extra deck. Look at the top three or six cards from your deck and pick one of them. Um, because there are a lot of decks that don't need their extra deck or that can afford to put things out of the extra deck and then having to or have the ability to look at six cards the top six cards and pick the one you need to maybe break a board it's insane so spending 30 super rare crafting points on this 
it's a safe bet like you may wonder oh you don't have it why why are i telling you this or why are uh, am i telling you this um like there wasn't a deck um and that needed it until now because i uh, want to play labyrinth but the labyrinth support will come in the future but then i will have to craft this card so this one here is super polymerization this is a niche ultra rare to get it off the table like a tier 3 niche ultra rare it's pretty good in branded despia you need a good fusion deck uh, a fusion extra deck you need fusion monsters in your extra deck to be able to use this so this is super niche in a fusion heavy deck you can use this to break a board but other than that not that important so emergency teleport is a quick play spell which special summons one level three or lower psychic monster from your hand or deck but banish it during the end phase of this turn it's at two because it's super strong it can get you a body out of the deck which you can use to link summon or do something else maybe xyz summon um this is super super niche super specific um some of the sprite decks are using these because obviously you, you can summon a level two uh, monster it has to be psychic by the way <laughs> as the card says so super niche super specific but will come up from time to time uh, the next is a big player in the TCG at the moment against Kashtira is Book of Eclipse. Sh uh, change all face-up monsters on the field to face-down position and then you have to change them up during the end phase and the opponent draws as many cards as he has monsters flipped up again. So you basically want to flip down the whole enemy board then destroy it so they don't get the card and you have broken the board. Um, at the moment there are way better board breakers like Dark Ruler Noma. When the Kashtira format hits this can be a good card so I think yeah, crafting one or two of these it's fine but this is more of a niche card that will become better in the Kashtira format we are not in the Kashtira format right now so you won't read it need it right now but this will come up from time to time tier 3 staple super rare so now we are getting to another of these cards that you need to craft so we have ash blossom on the you have to craft these list maxi have to craft these and uh yeah th like these two are by far the most important but i think the next card is called by the grave and <laughs> it's so funny because everything goes together like in the tcg where this is uh, not allowed Ash Blossom is not such a big thing as it is here in Master Duel and Called by the Grave is not such a big thing as here. Why is this a big thing? This can interrupt the Maxi and this can interrupt this. So this is the most or the strongest card in the game. Uh, you could say and this can negate this and this can negate these both. And that's why this triangle, as you could say, uh, is super strong and you should craft this, this and this first. You need two of these, three of these, three of these. Craft them. You will basically put them in every deck. Um, same could be said for the next card, Crossword Designator, which can imagine the situation. You have three of these, three of these, two of these, and then you can use this to negate either one of these if you have them already in your deck. So your opponent plays an Ash Blossom, you have this, and also an Ash Blossom. You play this, then you declare Ash Blossom, and Ash Blossom gets negated because you already have it in your own deck. So the only thing is that you need to have cards in your own deck, um, and then you can and you can negate everything. And as you already have these cards as they are the main staples in your deck you can also put this in and be fine so crafting this 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 and this this is top priority these are the best cards to craft and i will um yeah there's one other i would say fits in the category but we will see that in a moment uh then forbidden droplet we get also from the 700 gems back for free as i like to say i think at the start you are perfectly fine with having one of these there are people that like this card I personally don't like it that much i would rather go for a dark wheel no more if i need to break a board or i need a board breaker card Nevertheless, this is a really good card, but I think having one of these, it's fine. Um, you can craft another one, but putting three of these in, uh, you would do that very, very rarely. So next card is Eradicator Epidemic Virus, and any deck that have, has this uh, above uh, 2,500 attack dark monsters, like the Labyrinth Strategy, can put this card in, and it's super strong because it can destroy for three rounds every trap or spell card. Super strong, but your deck need to be built for this. Um, that's why this is more of a niche card, and in most cases you would not craft three of these but maybe one or two so next card oh, i already talked about this i love evenly matched but this is because i played the tcg best of three and you always put this in the side deck and when you are going second you side this in and basically can win the game with only this card here in our game um, this is also a stable card i would say but you need a specific deck to make this work uh, you need a spell or uh, sorry uh, trap heavy uh, deck to make this work like labyrinth because they benefit from having many traps in the deck and so you can fit this in like in normal decks you basically would never put this just in so yeah this is a good card but i would say more of a niche super rare so now infinite impermanence is the next ultra rare which i would consider a staple and craft these after these 
four. So go for these four, then go for infinite impermanence. You can get one for free, and then I would uh, craft two of them because uh, this is a super solid negate card, which is basically in nearly every deck. Some decks cannot make room for them, uh, but super strong will come up, often will come up in nearly every format against every deck. It has a use case, so this is a saved craft after these cards. So these six are by far the most important cards to craft. Oh, these are five, right? One. Yeah, these are five. These five are by far the most important cards to craft. This one you get for free out of the seven R gems packs for free. And I think you are fine with one. This is also very specific. You can put this in trap decks, maybe in a labyrinth deck or in an Eldritch deck. And there you would put maybe two or three. But if you do not plan on playing these strategies, you don't need more of them. You are fine with one. So anti-spell fragrance. This is normally a good side deck card because if you have this in a side deck and then you play against spell heavy decks, you can just flip them up and then basically win the game. Um, but there were times when, um, for example, Sword Soul put this in the main deck to fight against the Runic strategy. Um, this will come up from time to time, more of a niche tier free super in my opinion. And the next three cards, these are all floodgates. Floodgates meaning you play them and this is or stays on the field and limits the interaction that your opponent can have with the game, which uh, is the reason why many people don't like these cards. Don't like the floodgate strategies because it is boring it limits you from interacting with the game skill drain your monsters don't have effects anymore so you are basically playing normal monsters which is pretty lame you can't go for combos you cannot activate the effects and do the strategy your deck is supposed to do so it's pretty lame but um for decks that use floodgate strategies like the pure runic deck or maybe variants of labyrinth or eldlish this is of course a really staple card you need them in those decks and uh, for that reason it's more of a niche super rare staple but if you're planning on playing these grindy these um floodgate decks then you definitely can safely craft every one of these and be fine with it so now we come to the extra deck and of course the extra deck is more flexible but there are still cards uh, that uh, could be considered or can be considered staples so the first and you can see already most of them are xyz and most of them are link monsters we only have one synchro summon which is baron de fleur which is one of the most solid level 10 synchros able to negate one thing and then also destroy one card in each turn each of your turns um so this is in pretty much every deck that can make a 10 uh, level 10 synchro um, this is the, the level 10 synchro that is in every deck that is able to do it. So the next card, it's, it's a safe craft. Uh, this will come up in uh, many formats, in many decks. You can craft these and not feel bad about it. So the next two cards I will explain together and then we go for this. This is Downward Magician and this is a Divine Arsenal Zeus, which can clear the whole board. And this is one of the most important extra deck staples. And this goes together with this. Why is this the case? When you are attacking with an XYZ monster, let's say with this one. It's not part of the combo, but let's just imagine you're attacking with this card and then in the main phase two you can overlay this here on this card um, as this was made with two materials and this card can be overlaid uh, by using a rank three or lower xyz monster you control oh that's by the way this one wouldn't work because it's like three um, but you would put another card in another xyz monster which has a rank three or lower then you would attack with it and then you would overlay the Downward Magician and then you would have four materials and then with that you can go into Zeus who normally leads, uh, needs le two level 12 monsters but uh, doesn't need it because once per turn if an XYZ monster battles this turn you can also summon this by using one XYZ monster. So what you do is you have your level 3 or lower XYZ monster this battles then you go for the Downward Magician over this XYZ monster in main phase 2 then you have 4 materials or the Downward Magician that has 3 materials and itself is the 4th material and then you go into Zeus which then has 4 materials and his effect needs 2 materials to detach to destroy the whole board besides himself and this is not hard once per turn when he has 4 materials he can basically do, the, uh, do this 2 times in 1 turn so that's why this card is super strong but you basically always play it together with the Downward Magician. The next card in the extra deck stables is number uh, 41 Baguska. Um, this is a good defensive option because if this card is played in defense position then every other card will go to defense position and they cannot activate their effects. So if you're having a bad game state and you need to prolong the game maybe draw a few cards to have some answers you can play Baguska and maybe get you some extra rounds. So the next one is Linkoribo. Um, the reason why Linkoribo and Linkoribo, well, this one is better, the super rare, uh, this comes up more often, but this also comes up. Um, the reason why these are so good, this is good because it's a generic Link one. So you can do this with one level one monster and this you can do with one level four or lower cybers monster so one of the strongest card types in this game is a link one because you can make it with only one card so for example let's say you're playing you play this card okay and this card has an effect so you are getting an advantage of this card and then if you have a link one monster that this can go into this does not work but um there is another one which 
oh good to see i don't have in my list but with which i should also put there there is almirage exactly salamang dead almirage which for example you could make with an ash blossom uh, but that's a bad example let's say you have used your um, because almirage needs one normal sun monster with uh, 1000 or less attack let's say you have used this monster have used its effect and get an advantage and then you can link this away into a link one which also has an effect that gains you another advantage so without having to use one more card you get another advantage point that's why link one monsters are super strong and these are one a um, few of the best link one general monsters because some deck types have their own link one monsters but these are more general uh, link one monsters so this one is half craft because it's super rare and uh, these you will need in some decks but i would say amirage is way more important that said zeus is definitely one of the most important here in the list this also goes for baron and i think these are less important so the next one is uh, nightmare phoenix which you can make with two monsters with different names so that's the reason why it's a great staple because you can easily make it then it can destroy one card in the back row of your enemy it's a super rare you cannot really make a mistake by crafting this so this as well as zeus and baron is one of the most important extra deck staples you will need this in many decks it's ip mascarina maybe you've already seen it two non-link monsters you need for this and then you can link summon on your opponent's turn using your board super strong comes up very often and is a super safe craft to do this next one is verta anaconda which is i think banned in both ocg and tcg and i'm wondering when this card will get banned in a master duel but uh, for the time being if you have a fusion deck uh, that wants to fusion summon in any way this is a pretty safe craft this is super strong um, but it is more fusion deck specific so nightmare unicorn is more like general like the nightmare phoenix but it is an ultra rare so better consider it uh, like in uh, comparison to the phoenix but this is also you can make it with two plus so link three monsters with different names and then it can target one card on your opponent's field you can then discard one of your hand cards and this card goes back into the deck which is pretty strong so super generic comes up in many many decks this ip mascarina zeus and baron are the most important ones until now so we have Apalooza, both of the goddess which is thing four you can make this with two plus monsters with different names except tokens and um, this is one thing that you can often go into with ip mascarina so you have a big board and then you go into Apalooza, and for every link material this thing gains 800 attack and a monster negate so this is super strong super strong to um, like negate your opponent place but also always keep in mind um, if you make this for example with three link monsters this is only 2400 attack and it can be battled over and then it's gone this um, is also one of the most important staples from the extra deck um, same goes for the other two um, this could be the most important access code talker it's a super strong link four that you can easily make uh, which is um, able to finish nearly every game because uh, if you use its effect it gets 5300 attack and for every link monster in your graveyard you can banish a link monster and destroy a card on your opponent's field this is I think the most or the strongest finisher in the game and you will need it in many decks this is more specific underworld goddess of the closed worlds you can use four monsters of yours and one monster of the enemy to make this so you can like link away one of the enemy monsters which is super strong because uh, then um, you can just it's, it's like tributing them with lava golem uh, and this is a pretty safe craft which will come up often and will also be good in the upcoming tier elements format so when it comes to the extra deck i would say this zeus ip mascarina unicorn appalooza talker and goddess are the most important cards and as you can see like in the beginning i pulled this out of a booster but i didn't know how important it was and i decrafted this big mistake uh, i am missing these two but these are for sure the next ones i will go for um and yeah you should do as well so look at the list look at what you have already look at what decks you might play next of course if you play a 60 card deck then this is more important than is an ash but uh, even that could be argued now but this is a core card for a 60 card deck so this always depends on what deck you want to play but i think i have uh, shown you um, a good like summary of all the staples and now you have to decide which decks you want to play and craft but yeah you should always craft um, staples before you craft uh, specific deck cards because you cannot use them in other decks so i hope this helped in the budget list in the budget video series there will be more videos on how to go budget how to save your gems how to optimize your resource input in this game and uh, i'm happy that you have stayed with me to the end comment if you liked it comment if you have any suggestions for making the videos better and i hope we see each other in the next one